Here we go. CRT simulation implemented on the Shader Glass app, part three. It still doesn't work, let me tell you. <laughs> but, man, I'm still excited about it because I see the progress. It is definitely working better right now. And yeah, I'm gonna keep supporting them because this is exactly what we need right now. We have high refresh rate monitors that we cannot use because the games coming out are performing like absolute trash. And 60 FPS sample on hold absolutely sucks. It looks very blurry in motion. So now you have to use frame generation and all these tricks. Now, people ask me in the previous video, but what's the difference between frame generation and CRT simulation or flickering uh, technologies. Why? Why are you excited about this? Why would that be? Why would that be better in any way? What's? Why is that necessary? Well, the thing is, with frame generation, you know, you get input lag and weird artifacts. There's no way ar around that. I hope it gets better to the point where you cannot even tell the difference. We are not there yet, and we definitely need. A much higher base frame rate. 60 FPS is just not not good enough to get frame generation looking great. So, if all you can get is 60 frames per second, this CRT simulation can give you the maximum refresh rate of your monitor experience when you're panning the camera. So for eye tracking. So that's amazing. I'm getting 60 FPS on this game. I move the camera and it looks like I was getting 360. And the best thing about this CRT simulation shader is that the gamma looks so correct. It looks so right. It's not like you turn it on, like when you turn on BFI on your TV and now it looks dark. And, oh, nobody likes that. It's dark and it's flickering. No, this thing doesn't get darkened to a point where you cannot see on the darkness because the gamma is corrected and you don't see flickering unless you have issues which is the case right now uh, you have some sync issues and sometimes you see um, the lines uh, and I'll, I'll explain uh, why those lines are visible but at some point once we don't have any issues with it and it's working flawlessly in sync and the performance is rock solid, it has to be, uh, then it's just gonna be fantastic. So what I would uh, strongly recommend you is download the Shader Glass app, link in the description of the video, download the latest version. This is the version number three and give it a try. So how do you try this? Force the game to be 60 FPS on the Nvidia control panel or AMD GPU. So 60 FPS on the control panel, then use MSI Afterburner with uh, RTSS to lock the frame rate to the maximum refresh rate of your monitor. Okay? And that's it. Well, you see this happen here? Uh, I don't know why. I don't know why. If, if, if it was the game, I saw that. Yeah, you see that? <laughs> this, game is all, this game is all messed up, man. Let's see. Yeah, it's the game, maybe. I don't know. But anyway, you lock the frame rate to 60. Well, I mean, let, me let me restart the game, see if you can figure this out. So I was saying, you, got, you lock the game to 60 FPS on the GPU control panel to the maximum refresh rate with RTSS, and then just make sure that the game doesn't drop below 60. And then just open the Shader Glass app, and you're going to turn it on with Control shift and G. That's the, the shortcut key, Control shift g And when you do that, it goes full screen and it is working. And right now it's working. And it looks incredible until it starts flickering uh, like crazy and it becomes unusable. But now this game is probably the worst example because this game performance is absolute trash. Uh, but as you can see here, 360 FPS, uh, because of the shader glass app and then we have 60 base now when I move the camera this is 
fantastic, man. When it is working in sync, this is absolutely amazing emotion. It just looks like if I was getting 360. And the thing is, if I go before and after, look, this is, I'm going to turn it off. Before. I need to change the, the batteries of this thing. Am I supposed? Okay, here it is. So before is how the gamma looks after. Almost no difference. So yeah, thing is that you get that flickering, but it's better. It's a lot better than it was before. So the thing is, let me tell you how this works. Uh, to again to understand the difference between these and and frame generation. What this shader does is that it creates different versions of each frame. So if you have 60 FPS, each one of those 60 frames is used to create the flickering. So for example, right now I have 60 FPS, this is a 360 hertz monitor. The shader is going to create six different versions of each frame. So you get 60 multiplied by six, that's 360. Now, why do you need six different versions of the same frame? To simulate the rolling scan. So let's say, imagine you have a picture. Let's say you have this picture. The shader is going to create one frame where you see the top, the top part, and the rest is black. But that frame will not be like traditional BFI on, on, on some TVs or what the LGC one does. That frame is actually going to look closer to you know what a CRT would do. And the gamma is gonna be different. So if you look at that frame, it's not like just taking a picture of this and then making everything black but the top. It's going to have like a fading, fade out kind of look. So it's going to be uh, kind of clipping in one part and kind of darker in the other. And the purpose, uh, the reason to do that is so the gamma looks correct and you get less flickering. So there's a fade. So it's to simulate the phosphorus decay. That's why this is a lot better than BFI. Because it tries to simulate what CRTs used to do. So then you would have one version like this where you see the top of the frame, the rest is black. Then another version where you see this part and this is black and the rest is black and then you see another one and another one until the last one where you would see the bottom part and the rest is black. You would have six versions because it's a 360 hertz monitor. So now that doesn't take a lot of power. When you, when you turn that on and off, the GPU utilization is not suffering big time. Like for example, right now the GPU is at 24%, 25%. If I turn this on, the GPU goes up to 27, 28%. So now it goes back to 25, 24. So it's like next to nothing. So it's not demanding on the GPU and it should not be demanding on the CPU either. So it's not like frame generation, it's not going to cost you performance of the base frame rate. And more importantly, it should have much better input lag, a lot better input lag. Actually the input lag here, if I compare, this is the shader glass app and the rest. If I compare that, I cannot see any, any input lag difference um, at all. So the input lag should be better than frame generation and you would have no artifacts. Like no, I mean, there might be some, you know, trailing due to the phosphorus decay simulation, but I don't think at 360, I don't see anything really. I mean, let me try this. If I max this out, I move left to right. I do see some some issues. I do see some issues with with ghosting surrounding the the object. 
I do see some ghosting. But I don't know if that's because it's not working um, perfect. But the thing is, this this should be great. <laughs> it's still not working perfect. But this, this, at some point, man, I am confident that at some point, this is going to be such an amazing option. And a lot of people are going to prefer this over frame generation. Because 60 FPS is a lot easier to get than 120 FPS plus with frame generation. It's just better. And the input lag is going to be better. And for me, 60 FPS for frame generation is just not enough. I mean, you actually have to be getting like 70, 80 to even turn it on. And then you go down to 60 base. And now you are getting like 120 or 110 or something like that. So to go from 75 FPS to 120, but now you have artifacts and the input lag is significantly worse if you compare that with this which is basically just multiply the motion clarity 6x <laughs> um, you only need 60 fps i mean this is just such a big boost on the motion clarity and it's going to depend on your monitor too so now we're gonna get a 720 hertz 1440p rgb tandem wrgb oled monitor that's dual mode uh, so you can get your I think it's uh, 4k 520 Hertz uh, I forgot the specs of that monitor but I know it's 720p they initially they said 1080p 720 Hertz uh, with the dual mode but then they clarified it was 720 720 Hertz at 1440p but I think that monitor is 4k um, is it 4K 240? I forgot. I forgot, honestly. Uh, but the thing is, 500 Hertz plus OLED monitors are here. And I would actually get the... I would still go with a QD OLED. I would still go with a 500 Hertz QD OLED. But 720 Hertz is definitely going to be enticing. So the thing is, man, with high refresh rate monitors, we get this thing working perfect. All you need is 60 FPS. It's like a CRT with perfect blacks, with perfect contrast, with amazing colors. With it, it just, I think it's this working perfect. It's like CRTs would be almost dead. Like there would be no reason to to want to have a CRT other than you know perfect sharpness at any resolution basically no native resolution the input lag uh, for retro gaming and all of that yeah it's still crt will never die but you get the idea it will be just perfect at least for pc gaming it just will be amazing um so yeah, i mean i cannot wait for to have this working flawlessly let me know if you tried this uh in your feedback uh for the developer you know, support the developer go on the on the forums and they have a community uh, post in github I think where you can you know, share your your thoughts on it so yeah do that I'll keep trying it maybe in other games it's gonna be better but honestly I have not you see I'm stuck on the same place I have not played at all so let's talk about that um, for the last week I have been studying uh, my guitar 16 hours a day, <laughs> literally the entire day, because I I had a breakthrough, and I'm feeling, you know, a big improvement. And I had a an old, like a six year old uh, guitar channel where I had like a couple of videos. And I decided to start uploading there and I have 1,000 subscribers already. And because I made a video that blew up, has like 24,000 views. Uh, because I discovered, I had a breakthrough and I shared that. And people appreciated that. So I'm going to have two channels now that I'm going to be uploading videos. But this is my main channel. This is where I am making... Uh, the money okay this is this is what I have worked for over three years and it took me a lot of work to get here I don't want to lose it of course not and I'm gonna keep playing uh, games anyway I'm gonna share but the thing is when I am NOT playing games I have nothing to talk about 
I, I have I haven't turned on the PC since the last video I've been just practicing the guitar but I'm going to upload more this week I'll see if I can uh, you know, let me know what's going on in the world <laughs> what would you like to see uh, the thing is I also have to take apart the PC and repaste the CPU is way overdue and I haven't had time for that so that, that's another factor I don't want to use the PC without doing that and I don't have time to do that so I has that happened too uh, but yeah I want to do a live stream this weekend uh, and post more videos so let me know what would you like to see I also have this plasma that I pick up I clean it up and it's trash <laughs> I got it for free I'll make a video about it I'll show you how it looks uh, it doesn't look great so yeah <laughs> so let me know your thoughts and opinions um, again the channel thank you very much for for your support for all the members um, I mean thank you very much I have I haven't done anything for you this month let me know what would you like to see a like members only video uh, give me any ideas uh, to get the channel back to get the channel back on track so yeah, let me know your thoughts and opinions and if you have any questions.